It is now my pleasure to introduce Vanda Kvyatkovsky, a candidate for a second Bachelor of Arts degree in music, who was selected in a campus-wide competition to deliver the student address on behalf of this year's graduates. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my giddy aunt. I'm, uh, this is totally overwhelming. Uh, that is the first time anyone has ever pronounced my last name correctly. <laughs> Thanks so much, Erin. And that is quite an accomplishment. That, that name is an orgy of consonants. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, can't, I can't believe they're letting me stand up here uh, to share a few things about my crazy journey with you guys. Uh, I'm a bass player, and we're not allowed to speak in public, uh, <laughs> let, let alone go anywhere near a microphone. Uh, we're only allowed to lurk in the shadows and be the butt of some really bad bass player jokes. Um, when I told my boyfriend I was going to do this, he said, oh, it'll be a doddle. With that accent, you could read out the phone book, and they'll love it. Uh, so here goes. Uh, Aardvark, Abrahams, Adams. Oh, sorry, OK. Let's get serious for a minute. Uh, sometimes, even if you're an introvert like me, uh, you find yourself wanting to speak out for any number of reasons, uh, to share a story that other people might be able to relate to, uh, to support and encourage people that you care about, or just to give thanks to those who have supported and encouraged you along the way. And if you'll bear with me, uh, I'd like to do a little bit of all of those things. For starters, I'd like to offer a few words of encouragement and solidarity to my fellow graduates who are starting out with me on this exhilarating but terrifying journey called What Do I Do Now? Chapter one, page one. <laughs> Yikes. We find ourselves in the same boat as each other, in the middle of a vast ocean of possibility. The only thing I can confidently lay claim to is that I'm Columbia College Music Department's first, and hopefully last, menopausal, Anglo-Serbian, <laughs> legally qualified bass player. <laughs> And uh, although that gives me a pretty unique perspective on the student experience, the reason I'm standing here today is because I strongly believe that my experience is universal. I'm always caught off guard by how often I see my story played out again and again in people I meet everywhere. All of us here are just trying to find out who we are and what our place is in the world. Unfortunately for some of us, it takes longer than for others. Filling this incredible room today are people full of vitality and enthusiasm who've overcome considerable personal struggles to follow their passion. I'm really proud to be in your midst. I can honestly say that in the two years I've been here, the only way I've felt out of place is because I still use an iPhone 4. <laughs> what a stigma. Maybe this feeling of belonging is a sign of my own immaturity and inability to grow up. And I'm sure my long-suffering mum and dad would agree with that bit. But I'd prefer to think of it as all of us sharing a common human goal, creating art which is a unique expression of who we are. I go completely giddy when I see a budding artist overcoming self-doubt and fear to share a part of themselves with the world. When it comes down to it, age really is just a number, even though in my case that number happens to be closer to 100 than to 1. But let's not dwell on that. Uh, being an artist of any kind to me is about taking your life experience, your intuition, your knowledge, and your inner flame, and turning it into something unique and beautiful. I discovered very early on in my life that music was that thing for me. An early memory is listening to a popular British pianist called Bobby Crush, who had a really bad 70s haircut and a cheesy grin, playing Scott Joplin's Entertainer on TV. And I knew then that I wanted to learn how to do that, so I nagged my poor mum and dad, who'd come to the UK as immigrants from Eastern Europe with one suitcase, uh, hoping for a better life. I nagged them to buy me a second-hand piano, and I never had any doubt that there was anything else in the whole world that could live up to the sheer thrill of making music. But despite this early sign that the universe was waving in my face, 
I chose to ignore it, and I tried to morph myself into any number of unsuitable shapes. Somewhere along the line, like my hero, Bugs Bunny, I failed to take that left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> a long career followed, including several unsuccessful attempts at escaping what I knew deep down was a jail sentence for my soul. <laughs> Yet still I plugged away at it, because there really seemed like there was no way out. I thought that by choosing the safe path, I would be insulating myself from pain and uncertainty when in fact I was actually doing the very opposite, and in that process I was constricting my capacity to live a full life. Luckily for me, even while the joie de vivre was slowly ebbing away from my body, something buried deep inside refused to give up. A tiny seed started to take root in my subconscious. It led me to places that I've no idea how I got to. At 40, I, while I was sleepwalking through my life, I somehow found my way to take up the electric guitar, the drums, and any other instrument I could lay my hands on. And it finally took the shock of a close friend of mine deciding to check out early to give me the final push out of the black hole and into the glaring sunlight that turned out to be Chicago. A restorative year of making music and friends in the wonderful community that's the Old Town School of Folk Music somehow miraculously turned into a BA in contemporary urban and popular music at Columbia College and the happiest two years of my life. Few things can compare to the thrill of giving yourself permission to follow your passion. I didn't need a bestseller to tell me what my bliss was. And you absolutely can't deny the freedom that comes when you finally throw off the weight of expectation of those around you, wear, wave a cheery goodbye to all those naysayers, and go for it, and it feels really good. You wonder what took you so long. But boy, are you glad you got there. So even though we're not always conscious of it, Often, the biggest thing holding us back is ourselves. And we allow those enemies of joy and creativity to prevail, like our fear of failure, our self-doubt, sometimes even a sense of shame about others stamping on our dreams, the idea that we might be wasting our time, and the huge financial, emotional, and psychological commitment that is required to see things through. Every single person here today is faced with these real obstacles. And yet something in us has managed to carry on regardless and banish the fears and doubts long enough to create. I'd go so far as to say that we have a responsibility to do so, to ourselves and to the world at large, if we are to lead honest, committed, and creative lives. To paraphrase the words of the late, great Leonard Cohen, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. The light will eventually get in, and our tenacity uh, will lead the way. We need to show up, do the thing, and two-cheek it, and help each other along the way. And now to the really important bit. I'd like to thank my amazing teachers, classmates, and bandmates, past and present at Columbia College, for taking me in as one of your own despite my weird accent, and helping me believe in myself. I've been lucky enough to have some of the most inspiring artists around me, and I've learned the importance of being part of a community and how it can breathe life into our dreams. This is a really special place, full of creative brilliance, but also humility, and I feel incredibly lucky to be a part of it. I'd also like to say a humongous thank you to some incredible individuals in my life, some of whom are here today, who have supported me, cheered me on, scraped me off the floor when I was feeling sorry for myself, and who've taken delight in seeing me late bloom. In particular, my fairy god sister, the incredible force of nature that is Susan Messing, and to my musical guru, the sensei to my karate kid, Bob Goins. And finally, to my mum and dad, who've made all this possible, who weren't able to make the 4,000-mile journey to get here, but they'll be watching us uh, being live-streamed on the internet. So if you will indulge me for just one minute. 
if everybody could just say hello after the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, I'd like to end on a few words of wisdom from another one of my heroes, George Carlin. When feeling, uh, but I promise it's clean. When, uh, when you're feeling overwhelmed by uncertainty, just remember, nobody knows what's next, but everybody does it. Life is exquisitely and painfully short, so carpe that diem, eat it like a rib, rock and roll. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Thank you, Vanda K. Vietkovsky. I had to say it again. <laughs> um, and I think I can speak for everyone on this stage. This postmenopausal professor is so glad you found not only Chicago, but Columbia College. <laughs> the